All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, seems to uh, be kind of a, uh, pretty lively in here. Must be, uh, must be uh, game week. Uh, Maryland, which is uh, it hopefully as exciting for y'all as it is for us. We're, we're, we're pretty, uh, pretty eager to uh, get uh, uh, this thing going here for the next few days to get our preparation done and, and head into what should be a, a very electric weekend here in Morgantown. Uh, seems like forever since we've had uh, the Terps over here. Uh, you know, we've been over in Maryland the last couple of years, but um, we've played over there three times and over here once. So uh, since I've been here, so I'm 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 excited about uh, you know them coming over and our team's excited about them coming over and I know our fan base is excited about Maryland coming over. One of the few regional rivals that we have uh, on the schedule. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's a mistake that uh, this game sold out pretty quick. Um, you know, I know it means a lot to our fan base and means a lot to WVU, and I know is is the same for their uh, their their program as well. So uh, it's going to be fun. Saturday is going to be fun. I know we're going to have an electric crowd, and it's going to be a live atmosphere. Uh, every seat will be taken, um, which is uh, going to be something that would probably fire them up as well. Uh, so um, I know we're going to be pretty excited about this happening. So. Anyway, they, it's a good, a, a, a good Maryland team is coming. Uh, very well coached. Uh, Coach Etzel's been there for as long as I've been here. Uh, very, very well coached. They got lots of depth. Um, they're, they're, they're sound in what they do on all three sides. Uh, they've been doing the same thing offensively for, for a while now with Coach Loxley. Uh, you know, Coach Etzel's got his hand in what's going on defensively. He's a defensive guy. Uh, so, so there, there's uh, some similarities, although that the, the coordinator has changed and, and, and their scheme is, is a little different. It's, a, it's more simple, so I know it makes sense to them because they're never out of position. They're in, they're in, they're in position to make plays each and every time that they snap the ball. So, um, and then uh, special teams is, is very sound as well. Uh, we know we got a challenge with that. I, I'll start with them, the, 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 the special teams aspect of it. Uh, got another battle of two pretty good kickers. Hopefully we win this one just like we did the last one. Uh, but uh, Brad Craddock coming over, Lou Groza award winner. Uh, you know, was an All-American. We feel like we got a pretty good kicker in Josh, but uh, he's he's a weapon for him. And uh, he's got a strong leg and does some uh, good things for him. And then the return game with Likely is something that I made reference to last week that we got to do a great job of covering kicks. Um, it's going to be a challenge, but uh, we better get used to it because there's a lot of good returners in the Big 12. Uh, but uh, they're 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 fantastic at it. So it looks like they've uh, settled on their quarterback with uh, Caleb Rowe. Uh, came in through for a bunch of yards. They they've been moving the ball offensively now, averaging almost 500 yards a game and putting up some points. So uh, have, having some. Uh, so, uh, some uh, familiarity with what they're doing with the quarterback and having settled on on row, uh, I think's given them a little bit of a comfort level there. It starts up front for them. They're big. They're physical. Uh, protect the quarterback as good as anybody. Uh, they they got three or four backs that that they don't mind handing the ball to as well. They're very multiple. The one thing with the new guy is they don't run the quarterback as much with him as they did. Uh, the guy that they've had the last couple of years, and uh, the Hills kid as well. So, um, you know, they're they're going to put the ball in other people's hands, which is why they're throwing the ball a, a, a lot more. Uh, defensively, a lot of the same bodies, same names that I'm familiar with that I've seen starts with their front. They get after the quarterback as good as anybody. Uh, they got great rush guys. Their interior D linemen are big, thick people that get to the quarterback as well. Uh, active linebackers with uh, a secondary that can cover. Uh, the two best corners we've seen to date uh, with Likely and Davis, um, you know, veteran guys that have played a lot. Um, I'm sure they're going to get in our young kids' face and, and challenge them. And um, I'm pretty fired up to see how our young guys respond to that because I expect them to play against anybody. Uh, but uh, overall, no, it's going to be a test. Uh, should be a very, very, very live. Uh, exciting atmosphere in, in, in Morgantown. Got the, the West Virginia University Hall of Fame as well. 
Uh, congratulations to Coach Bowden and Amos Zaraway and Ken Herrick uh, for, for coming back to go into the Hall of Fame. I know that's going to mean a lot to them and, and the program as well. So can't tell you how, how, how excited we are for the upcoming game. So other than that, uh, open it up to some questions. Dana, if you go back to your, your quarterback situation when you went to Maryland two years ago and you're kind of hamstrung with some things, if, if you care to revisit that, in which situation you were in, but kind of bookend it with the progress you've made there now and just how much better off and to your liking. Yeah, you know, I, I've reminded our team of what happened two years ago. Um, it's it's not something I can hide from or run from. It's the worst defeat that I've ever taken. But but uh, we we weren't in a good place. You know, we played a couple of different quarterbacks in that game and played one with a tour pack, which is hard to throw the ball with the tour pack. You know, didn't didn't know about it. But anyway, we turned the ball over six times. They 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 outplayed us. They they strained harder. They their effort was better. Um, everything that could have went wrong went wrong. Uh, it it, it uh, motivated us, and I think we improved a whole bunch uh, going into it a year later. Um, being able to win at Maryland, uh, uh, fixing a lot of those problems. There was snap issues. There was quarterback problems. Clint played really good against them last year. Um, offensively, we played really good against them last year. We played a lot faster. We picked up the tempo. We took care of the ball. We made plays downfield. We ran the ball effectively. Um, you know, and I, I think we're every bit as uh, good right now as we were then. What's your guys respond on Sunday, coming back off a couple days off? Oh, they're good, energetic. Uh, I think they were bored for one, potentially two weeks. So, uh, you know, they were, they were good to get back. We had a pretty high-spirited, energetic practice on Sunday night under the lights. And I, I, I anticipate that being the same here today and tomorrow. I know you mentioned you had a game plan last week during a bye week. Did they do anything different against South Florida to alter your game plan on one? No, not much. It looked to me like it was the same stuff on, on all three sides. So. You know, other than the fact that, you know, like I mentioned with, with, with Caleb Rowe, they're probably going to throw the ball a little bit more. They don't run him as much. He's had two season-ending knee surgeries. So, um, you know, he's scrambled around a little bit and got a first down or two. But, you know, they're not going to do just a ton of zone read with them or quarterback draws or any of that that they did with Hills and they did with, with uh, the guy last year. Barber 100% yet or ready to go? Yeah, and again, we talked about this. He was, He was – he was pretty close to being good to go two weeks ago. And, you know, Jared being an old guy like me, Coach, you know, Coach Barber, um, his, he, we obviously want to be careful with him. When, when we have opportunities to be careful with him, then we want to be able to be careful with him. Uh, but he, no, he was, he was, he played, he played a lot last week. So he's good to go. You mentioned patience two weeks ago against Liberty. Is that same deal with the way Exo plays defense? Well, I, depend, I don't know. We'll have to get into it and see. There's always going to be that little guessing game going into a, a, a game that you don't really know what their plan is going to be until you get into it. But uh, they're, 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 what they've shown is they're going to play off like Liberty did on normal downs, and then they're going to they're going to get after you a little bit on on critical downs. So, which was more along the lines of what Georgia Southern did for for the entire game. So. Um, we'll have to see if they're going to change that in one direction or the other, you know. But we got to anticipate both, and you know, I, I, I hope we we can get to a point where we're good enough to be able to attack both of them. You know, whether we have to be patient and and put the ball in play where where, where we need to, uh, but then be able to handle pressure uh, and defeat man coverage when they're doing that, which is what they've shown on critical downs. Danny, you had some, some tough games, Big 12 games. This is an interesting comment you made about the, being the worst, the Maryland game a couple years ago being the worst defeat that you've had. What was it, just the combination of so many things Fast. that day? I mean, we lost 37-0. to zero. Turned the ball over six times, didn't, didn't play very good. The weather was bad. You know, I, I kidded around that said it, it poured every time we had the ball and it didn't pour when they had the ball. It's just what it felt like, obviously. Uh, but they, they did, they just played much better than we did. Danny, you mentioned coverage on special teams. Do you have to directional kick as well to, to pin him in the corner? 
Yeah, probably just kick it sideways, right out of bounds. <clears throat> um, you know, I, you, you can't play like that. I'm not going to tell you what our plan is, but uh, you can't play scared. You, know, you, you can't play the, the game of football scared like that. So uh, he, 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 I give him all the credit and respect in the world, uh, and, and he's as good as I've seen. Uh, but we're going to face some pretty good ones all year long. So it's a big, it's a big week for Nick. You know, we, he's got a he's got to place the ball where we want him to place the ball, and I can't emphasize enough the importance of the the front seven guys to be able to get off of blocks, which they do as good a job of holding people at the line of scrimmage than 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 I've seen, uh, which creates space. So I've said this a lot. You want to fix a punt returner, you give them time to catch the punt. That's step one. So we've got to get downfield and, and be able to be in position to make plays when we can. You, uh, you, uh, you, you made a comment after last year's uh, uh, Maryland game about, uh, jo uh, about Josh Lambert you know, you know, and how you two uh, really up to that point hadn't talked too much. You know, I, I was wondering over the past year if your you know that was a joke, joke, right? It was in jest. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was a joke. I thought everybody got the joke, but. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, I, well, yeah, no, you know, I was, just, I, you know, I was uh, wondering, you know, uh, you know, I guess uh, since then, and since he's kind of become the, or more, you know, and since he's, you know, he's kind of become someone who's uh, won a couple games for you guys on the last three trips, you know, you know, even though that comment wasn't just, you know, has your relationship, you know, kind of changed it all, kind of. Absolutely not. I don't <laughs> mess with him one bit. Now that part of it's true. Yeah. Now, luckily, we got a guy in Joe DeForest that have coaching, has coached more than one Lou Groza award winner. So we got a guy that knows how to handle kickers on a day-to-day -day aspect of, of things. Um, I'm not going to meddle with that, you know. And, 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 and all joking aside, there's a, a psychological aspect to kickers and punters and, you know, even deep snappers and holders to a lesser degree that – I don't know what I'm talking about, so it's in everybody's best interest to leave them alone. I know they're handled. I, I, I got a guy that knows how to handle them, and we're just going to leave it at that. Dana, um, I know on the, the call yesterday you mentioned that you know Texas Tech's win over Arkansas was good for the league. It's obviously not the first thing on your mind, but another Power 5 opponent. Does this represent another potential kind of statement game or just another step for the Big 12 kind of making its case? <laughs> It certainly doesn't hurt. We're gonna we're gonna think of uh, West Virginia first, and 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 try to get to three and zero in non conference, which was our first goal of the season with our team. Uh, you know that that that's first and foremost. Uh, you, you, we've talked scheduling in here, and we're gonna continue to schedule Power Five opponents. And when you have them on your your your, your schedule, you you need to you need to do everything you can do to win. Those, those. I, I know the, 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 this, this game means a lot uh, based on history because we don't that, – that's the one thing with the Big 12. We don't have a huge history with a lot of these teams, which, which is why, you know, starting with Oliver and, 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 and wholeheartedly supported by, by Shane is to continue to try to get regional opponents that we can play in the non-conference. That, mean, that means something. So I think that, that trumps what – they're saying in Dallas at the Big 12 office right now. I guarantee at the Big 12 office they're talking about, you know, all, all games against Power 5 being able to state our case for being as good a conference as there is out there. And what do you tell your young wide receivers that obviously with experienced good players going against that cornerback, they're going to try to intimidate them and, and I'm sure there'll be some trash talking and the likes. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, get used to it. There's a lot of good corners out there. There's a lot of good corners in the Big 12. Uh, you know, you, you, you uh, a guy that, that is a pretender, or you a guy that, that is a real guy? This is, this is a pretty good opportunity to show that you're a real guy, whoever it is. And we got more than just Javon and, and, and Shelton. You know, you know, the likes of, uh, of Gary Jennings has, has practiced his tail off and getting better every day. Uh, Karan White is, is practicing his tail off and getting better every day. We got got more than just those two young guys. We got other guys, and we're going to continue to add to that as well. Do you look at them and say, 
draw a circle around their campus and they can get their whole roster within five minutes of their campus. Pretty, a lot fertile, of pretty fertile recruiting grounds yeah. that we try to dabble in a little bit as well. I'm sorry, did that answer your question? Yes. And that's important to us. <clears throat> Yeah, you mentioned your tempo last year against them was really good. Um, is part of picking and choosing when to go fast, or how much of it is that affects the other team, not necessarily getting in the rhythm, but maybe they're not comfortable defending? Well, with, with, uh, with, with, with playing fast, and we were successful with it last year because we got first downs. If you get first downs, you can keep pressing the, the, the pedal down on the, you know, you keep going and going and going and going. So. Um, you got to execute in order to do that. And if you if you go back and look at the two offensive performances the last two years, you know we had zero success two years ago, and we went really slow because we were bad. Uh, last year we were on the verge of getting pretty good, and we had success, which allows you to continue to go fast. So far, don't this, hurry up and screw it up. Right. So, so far this season, have, have you had enough snaps or enough? Shifting gears, I guess, to have a handle on. on where oh we're yeah, at. yeah, we're and we're going to continue to get better at it. <clears throat> and is the importance of Saturday's game magnified even more based on the gauntlet you got coming up in October? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, <laughs> Oklahoma, Oklahoma <laughs> State, to see you, Baylor. <laughs> Who? <laughs> I know it's ahead, but we're not worried about it. You know, what, what are you going to do about it? You know, we're going we're to focus on this one, and it, it's, it's our goal to get a 3-0. and I, We haven't even talked about the Big 12 yet. So it's our goal to get to 3-0. and we're, we're giving everything that we got to win this game, and after that, we'll figure out who's next on the schedule. Danny, you've offensive. talked about this series. It's going to take a break for a while. Would you like to Only see a couple years, though, right? Four. Is it four years? Yeah. Would you yeah. like to see long term? Would you like to see it continue or let the other Pitts, Penn State, Virginia Techs? Yeah, we got we got to spread it around, you know, and, and I think they're going to want to spread it around as well. So, you know, ha having having you know a couple of games every other couple of years or whatever, I think is probably about right. You know, it doesn't need to disappear. I know that it means too much to everybody. Um, but you know where are you going to stick it? I mean, we just we just got penciled in a, or, or pinned in a, a four game schedule with Pitt in the two, what, 21, 22, 23, 24, something like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's just it's 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 a, it's a, it's a it's, scheduling is is hard. But uh, I, I definitely support it and know it needs to continue in some form or fashion. You Your expect the line has in a lot of sack yet this season. Do you think that's due to maybe them being talented or the competition they played and how do you kind of plan to get through them? Well, I, I don't, I, I think they've played good teams. Uh, they, they, they've, played, they've played good teams, so uh, I think they're pretty good up front. You know, they're big, they average around 305, three returning starters. Um, you know, so uh, their, their their scheme. They've been doing the same thing for quite some time, and they've they've coached up the quarterbacks to get the ball out of their hands. So um, it's going to be a challenge to get there, and we got to figure out a way to get there. That's been something I've been talking about for quite some time. Is we need to get to the quarterback. So looking forward to getting out there today and working on it. You expecting to see only coaches from your team on your sideline? <laughs> I thought that was common sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, when, you're, when you're scouting teams, do you notice penalty habits on the other side? And do you draw any meaning from maybe patterns or things that seem to appear in key situations, anything like that? I'm, I'm, what was the first part of that? When you're watching other teams scouting, offense, defense, special teams, do you track penalties? Does it mean anything to you? Can penalties? You know, Yeah, I don't. I, I I don't. I really don't. You know, we we uh, we coach te we coach our guys and pay attention to our guys. I mean, really hard and talk about technique and playing smart and and uh, you know don't put your team in a bad situation. We do that with us a lot. I've never done it with the opponent. Is that what you were asking? Just curious if it means anything to you. Like if they've, they've had a couple turnovers called back and big returns. And... 
Not really. Not really. I, I've, al I've always taken the approach with referees, you just ignore them. It's always been my approach. And if you obsess over them, you're costing yourself time and costing yourself work. Uh, you could probably lose your mind out there on the sidelines more than I tend to. Um, so I tried to ignore all that and just play the next play.